here. What's up, everybody? It's your favorite Skullface fans, favorite nerd. And today we are looking at the Mezco 112 scale Punisher on loan to me once again from Mr. Chris Pinkerton from the Realm of Collectors, who has a show called Enter the Realm on Mondays on YouTube. And then you can find it on iTunes and everything else. Great guy. Uh, love him dearly. And he let me take a look at this, the Daredevil, and then one other figure that we have coming up as well. This is an interesting figure. I have very mixed feelings about it, so I think it'll make for a good review. Uh, I don't have any reason to delay us much longer, so let's just go ahead and get started. Or maybe I do. Let's read the unabridged novelization of Star Wars Episode One: of Phantom Menace. Chapter 1. Tatooine. The sun's burned down out of the cloud. First and foremost, he comes with a display base. They all seem to. They're all great. They're all smart. I love how they do them. Uh, I think this is very classy. I've said it before. I'll say it again. And I think it's a uh, it's a nice touch. It, it, it makes it feel like a professional company and a professional piece, a, a, a premium product. You know, I just, I, I'm quite fond of them. And then they went with a black peg for plug in for the foot. And then you can remove the peg by doing this. I've shown this before, but it's worth showing again. Uh, I'm not going to push it. It seems to be a pretty tight fit, and I don't want to cause any damage to it, but theoretically, you would plug this in. It hinges down here at the base. It hinges here. It hinges here, and it swivels here, and then these clasps open up and close to grip the figure. I will say a lot of these hinges, both on this uh, stand and the Daredevil one, have been really tight, so use a little bit of caution when you're working with yours. Of course, you can't have a Punisher figure without an arsenal, which this guy definitely has. So we'll try to go through them piece by piece. They're kind of done the same. There is some interesting stuff. He has, I'm not a gun guy, so forgive me, but he has this kind of uh, assault rifle. I think this uh, magazine does remove and it is uh, loaded. And the, the bullet at the top is painted. Uh, gold and then it looks like even possibly washed and then the gun itself is dry brush silver and then it comes also with a uh, replacement magazine that you can also load in depending on your your preference and then you can have him holding one or whatever you want to do so that's all pretty cool you have uh, this unit here which I'm, I've played with in video games but I'm not 100% sure on the name and it's dry brush silver as well and this magazine also removes and let's see you can see the bullet in that one as well if it'll focus painted gold same sort of detailings and that fits in as well and then he has a pistol and it is painted black or it's, pardon me it's sculpted in uh produced rather in black and then it is dry brush silver and then silver accents are painted on and it looks like the barrel was even washed and then you can take the clip out that has a bullet at the top as well painted gold oh boy that's gonna be hard to find and then of course I did find it by the way uh, he comes with an extra clip as well um, you know and then you can insert that so that's all pretty cool. 16 in the clip and one in the hole and all that kind of stuff. And then it also has uh, a knife. We can talk about this real quick. So it's black, it's painted silver for the blade and for the bottom and then like the wrap, I th or maybe it is, uh, maybe it's all painted. And then the wrap might be painted in black and then the silver's painted on. Really cool sculpt. I love all like the little holes and stuff and little, you know, the tool element of the knife. All that works well. The knife can also be stored into the back of his belt with no problem. And then it has this uh, grenade launcher, and this is really well done. We have silver paint, we have dry brushing, we have washes going on. It gives a very cool, very menacing, very, um, I don't know, mechanical look. And then this piece here, you can uh, rotate up, and then you can also move this out uh, here. It's a small peg, so use caution. And then you can actually load this with the grenades. And have it all done. And then you could also have him holding one if you wanted, you know, anything you wanted to do as far as proposing or pictures or whatever. And then put this piece back on and you're all load it up which is really 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 cool and especially if you had him like holding one and loading it like I don't know I, I love that kind of stuff and then it has this uh, effect piece which plugs into both 
uh, the assault rifle and it even has the bullet painted on in silver and then all this is translucent that goes from like a deep yellow to a white maybe an orange to a white orange to yellow to white so to speak and then it also uh, just for the sake of discussion uh, plugs into the pistol as well and then uh, all of these are held in his hand just fine we'll show those throughout the review and this gun as well forgot to show this one of course he comes with alternate sets of hands two I'm going to get your hands and then one you can use this as a relaxed hand or to hold the other end of, of a, a rifle or grenade launcher he comes with this hand which I guess is some sort of fighting hand I'm not entirely sure and then he comes with uh, two fist hands closed so that's good. And then he comes with two additional heads. This one, which is like the super angry Mr. Castle. We got the scars on the lips and stuff. They're all painted. We have the five o'clock shadow. That's a wash that's added on. The face is all shaded. The eyes are painted extremely well and a gloss is added to the eyeballs. The teeth are all painted well. There's a gloss on the tongue inside the mouth. Like the hair is painted and sculpted. No shading there, but I don't think it needs it. It's really, really, really well done. And then the other face is like the, you know, just came back from battle and you should see the other guy face. And he's got, you know, his scars, he's got this little bit of a grimace with the teeth showing through. We got the scars on the chin and lips and forehead and eye. One eye is swollen shut. Really cool sculpt, really interesting sculpt. Um, takes a certain type of collector to use this more often than not, but uh, the, the bandage over top of the bridge of the nose, like it's just... There's a ton of care, effort, and passion in, into this. So now let's talk about the figure. So we, I want to go through the, uh, the soft goods and, and kind of detailings first, and then we'll do the articulation. So it's all of this same material for the pants. Uh, I'm not sure. Okay, so it, this, is, this is part of my issue here. So it's like a lot of this kind of reminds me of Garth Ennis' run on um, Punisher Max, just aesthetically. Uh, in terms of the face sculpt and such. And as a result, I'm not sure why they didn't go with a more tactical, you know, military style looking pant, like a BDU. It just seems like that would have worked better than this. And as a result, this starts to fall into that uh, that problematic look that I have with the way that soft goods look on 112 scale figures, where it just looks like they're wearing pajamas and not really wearing proper clothes. So I'm not crazy about this. It is baggy, like it has like the right kind of 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 look like the cut is right but it's just like if it had like the pockets and like the you know the the bdu style pockets and then the regular pockets and it just looked more tactical maybe some some holsters on the legs and stuff because like there is no holsters for the guns which is another issue of mine we'll get to that later uh you know like i just i think it looks inappropriate i don't think it looks right the sweater on the other hand does look good i will say the stitch work is really tight and really well done it's all done in the crotch of the pants and then on the inside of the legs and it's uh it looks good the sweater looks really good. This this line work, the stitch work and stuff looks looks relatively appropriate. I think that black hides it pretty well. So that looks good. And then it has the little uh, elbow pads. They're not quite on the elbow. Uh, I would imagine that's uh, I don't know. It's, it doesn't seem like an articulation issue. Like it just seems like it's they're placed wrong and they're both placed wrong. Like they're both too far up and they're both too far um, outward. So that's a bit of an issue. I do like this uh, plastic piece here. This is a, on, on top of the unit, and it's a good sculpt. It's painted extremely well. I think it's a black base. I think. No, it's a white base. I'm sorry. The black is painted. It's all dry brushed, a brown and a black, and then the bolts and stuff are all painted. The straps are all dry brushed with the brown, and then the buckles are all painted silver, and the back of it is all dry brushed with that same brown. It looks really good. Same thing for the belt, which is a floating piece. It's a black, and then it's dry brushed with a brown, which, you know, honestly, I would have thought that would have been a, a, a poor choice, but it does look like a very shadowed, like, dark leather belt. It, it was a really, really smart choice. It wouldn't have been the way that I would have done it, and I would have been wrong. I think it's really well done. Great sculpt work. All the buckles are painted. It's uh, it's really well done. For the boots, way too big for your boots. They're all sculpted beautifully. Dry brush with that brown for like some weathering. The silver buckles are all painted on. The laces are all they like, got hit with the dry brush. So some parts look better than others. But for the most part, I think it looks pretty good, if not forgivable. 
and then the bottom of them are painted. There's a little bit of silver that got slopped up on there, but you know, accidents happen. It's on the bottom of the foot, so let's let that ride. But yeah, this, the sculpt work is tremendous. The paint work is tremendous. For the gloves, they're all sculpted well, and it seems to be the same sort of dry brushing technique used. Let me get that focused, uh, which is the brown, and that looks good. And then we have the flesh tone underneath, so it all works relatively well. I think it was a smart choice to go with this uh, black here at the base of the, of the palm for the joint. I think that that looks like it just looks more like it should be glove than hand. So, I mean, or than flesh. So I think that was a smart choice. And then this face sculpt is absolutely beautiful. It's brilliant. It looks spot on. Once again, we have the five o'clock shadow dry, I mean, I'm washed on. We have nice, nice, subtle. It's not even subtle. It's, it's, it just works. The shading <clears throat> on the flesh tones. You know, it's darker around the eyes. It gets into all those crevices. It must be a type of wash, but it's uh, it looks really good. The eyebrows are painted well. We got the gloss paint on the eyes for the finish. It's just a, it's a it's a really beautiful head sculpt. It just reeks of the character. Extremely well done. And then we'll talk about the articulation. So the head is on a double ball peg from the head into the neck, and then the neck it feels like is on a single ball peg. So you get the head down to there up to there you get the swivel you get the confused dog look the articulation is pretty much uh, unhindered unlimited either way and then we have this collar i forgot to talk about that's all stitched on well too and it hides the joints so for the shoulders we've kind of talked about this before um there actually and this feels like it has the plastic bit between the uh the shoulder muscles and then the the chest, it feels like it is covered, and then this, you know, obviously any joint hinges are covered with the soft goods. Um, as a result, I think it's on a hinge to a ball peg into the torso. Shoulder articulation isn't really hindered. It does look a little goofy when you get past a certain angle, but I think you can hide it in the pose. And then you can get up to about, I'd say, almost the full range up. So I don't think you're going to have any issues even with the soft goods on this guy. Double jointed elbow gets you almost the full range, but I figure this bulky, I think that that's fine. And then the wrist swivels both at the forearm and at the hand, and then it hinges on this ball joint so you can get up, down, and then also in, out. So no problems there. Same for the other side. Torso, huh, is this? The torso articulation, okay, so there is some sort of, maybe a single, I can't really tell, between the chest and the abdomen, but because of this vest, it is fairly limited. Uh, and then there is another one from the abdomen into the pelvis, but once again, because of the stuff added on, it is a little limited. So, like, that's pretty much the full range. You can crunch about that far forward and about, and I'm trying not to use the hips, not really far back you can get over to the sides so that's a little limited there and that's a soft good issue uh the hips ball pegs ah, i could say that's the full van dam right there jack and then uh not so much for the full monty and then thigh swivel the leg muscles are sculpted underneath but because of the the bagginess of the pants i don't even feel like they had to do that uh double jointed knee getting you the full range we have a, a boot swivel because that's where the connector point is and you know it's fine and then we have uh for the foot ankle wise we have an ankle swivel we have a tilt up slightly a slight tilt back and a slight rocker so the once again the the feet articulation is a little limited and then the torso articulation is a little limited on this one so there's it seems to be like recently there's always like two points that end up suffering uh but overall uh it's it's not a bad it's not a bad it's not a poorly made figure size comparison wise there he is with a marvel legend so once again uh, much more kind of in line with the uh the import proper 112 scale than the more uh, domestic 112 scale. Final thoughts wise, let me talk about the issues. It's not the most well-balanced figure. I do have a hard time posing him in any sort of dynamic pose without using the stand, but he has the stand, so I kind of feel like that's ultimately forgivable. I feel like the pants were a poor choice. I feel like they should have been military style pants, tactical style pants to give it that real Punisher Max feeling because this has a, excuse me, a more Punisher Max vibe. We have articulation limitations once again, both in the ankles and in the torso. And at least half of that is due to the soft goods combination, mainly in the torso. This is just a sculpting thing down there in the boots. I feel like there should have been more holsters on this guy to store the weapon. I feel like that's something that sometimes is forgotten with the Punisher. The, the, for me, the, the weaponry 
the armory of the Punisher is just as much part of the character as the physical presence of the character himself. So I feel like the weapon should always be able to store. I feel like we should have had holsters for the uh, pistol. I feel like we should have had straps for the machine gun, straps for the... Uh, for all of the weapons so that you could have them over his chest over his shoulder and and be able to really arm him up And I feel like that's something that's often forgotten and often overlooked with Punisher figures I always feel like the entire armory should either have a closet to or a safe to go along with the figure or Should be able to be stowed in some way on the figure and no matter how ridiculous it may seem and those are really my only gripes I think that the sculpts of the face and the paintwork of all of the, the plastic overall is absolutely top shelf. I think that the soft good stitch work and proportions look good. I think that the sweater looks good. The elbow pads are a little off, but I think it's forgivable. I think the accessory range is absolutely outstanding. I feel like Mezco might have the best uh, accessory assortment of any line out there. I think I'm getting ready to give them that because they knock it out of the park. Plenty of hand options, plenty of face options, display bases, weapons, like they really do it. So I give them all the credit in the world. And do I recommend this? As long as you're okay with the way the pants look. I think the pants are a real bummer, but if it doesn't bother you, it's definitely a subjective thing. If it doesn't bother you, then I see no reason to tell you not to. It's really well made. It's really well cared for. Once again, there's a lot of passion. There's a a lot of love in this line is just whether or not you can deal with the aesthetic choices and the design choices of the characters that they're doing in a smaller scale using a thought process that's usually big used for larger figures and if you can deal with that cool if not it's not for you I can tell you this one is is not for me but uh, that's only because I'm not crazy about the way that certain things translate across scales outside of that hope that helps thanks for listening thanks for watching until next time take care